Hi, I get questions every now and again about how to install Anaconda, what are the things that we should do to set this up, and how to use uh, Jupyter Lab instead of Jupyter Notebook, which ends up becoming kind of a default option in the uh, start menu options. Uh, the most important thing is you go to anaconda.com and you go to the download option. I am working on a PC. If you're working on a Mac or a Linux machine, this uh, little icon here should change to the appropriate installer. Go ahead and download the installer for you. I will give today's examples based off of uh, the fact that this is going to be a PC-based installation. So if you have a Mac, unfortunately, I don't have enough experience installing Anaconda on a Mac, but I do know that there are options similar to what I'm going to show you today for Mac users. And uh, I like to say this is a one-stop shop for everybody, but it really isn't. Um, so uh, I'll show you how to work this in with a PC, and we'll go from there. So I'm actually already downloading this option, so I'm going to pause the video, and I'll just get us booted back up once the installation is complete. All right, so I've completed downloading the installation package for Anaconda. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click on that. And uh, there are a couple things that it's asking for. It happens to end up being on my second screen. So forgive me there if you can. But basically, it's asking, um, you know, a basic startup menu on installation. So go ahead and click on next. It's going to want you to give away your liver, um, perhaps, you know, name your first kid anaconda and once you agree to those terms go ahead and click on that and i'm going to install just for me on this computer if you happen to have multiple users on your machine that need to use it you might want to use the all users of course you have to be admin to do that so i'll just click click on that here i actually have a destination folder and that's where i'm going to install it so i'm just selecting the, the default and also i select the default here um, with the only option here is I do what's recommended here and I clear the package cache upon completion. Now, to be honest with you, I've done this unchecked in the past and I've not had any issues. Um, but I think that I'm going to go with the recommendation and I'm going to install. Now, the installation time could take seconds, minutes, hours. It really depends on your machine um, and usually gets caught up here in like that last little jam here of 10%. So um, I'm going to wait for a few seconds, and if it looks like I need to pause the video and start recording again after that completes, then I will get started at that point. All right, so now I'm back, and uh, my installation was complete. I expanded out the details so I could see kind of where the status was thing of things were. To be honest with you, this took probably, I don't know, 5 to 10 minutes to complete. So if you're looking to install Anaconda, make sure that you give yourself ample time. It is not something that you can sit and do in a matter of minutes. All right. So now that the installation is complete, I'm going to go ahead and hit next. It's going to ask me for some other things. It's now available through the cloud, etc. I'm not going to worry about that at this moment. Um, I am also I'm going to uncheck this getting started stuff because honestly, um, I don't need it. All right, so I apologize for that little pause there. There was a few questions that I had while I was going through the process, and I wanted to make sure everything was set up for you properly. So let me go ahead, and I'm going to show you a few things here. Um, when the installation is complete, what you're going to actually see is you're going to go to um, your Start folder. You'll see an Anaconda folder, and then you'll see all these new things. One of the things that's in here is this Jupyter Notebook. And let me go ahead and click on that real quick. What's happening, and it's showing up on my other screen, is that this application is opening, and it's actually going to show um, this whole notebook environment. And what's really cool about this notebook environment is that it is web-based. So you don't have to download any more software, and then you can work on Python files straight from here. So I'm a big proponent for Jupyter um, in general, but I hate Jupyter Notebook. And it, especially if you're working with multiple files, multiple projects, it becomes a little bit of a problem. But let me show you some highlights as to why Jupyter um, has some um, advantages, especially in the file management thing. But the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to go to um, your particular folder, uh, your user folder on your hard drive. So for example, for me, on my Windows PC, I go to C colon, I go to users, I find my name. And if you look right here, this folder 
is actually the same folder that you see here on the left. There's a few things in or out, but notice music, OneDrive, pictures, save games, videos. And that's all like right here on the left or on the right, excuse me. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder inside this folder and I'm going to give it underscore Python, if I could spell Python, uh, underscore projects. And the reason why I'm going to do that is number one, the underscore brings it to the top of the list. And the other thing is, is that here now in my Jupyter notebook, it's always at the top of my list. I could always click on it and I could actually start a new Python project there. So uh, what I could do as well, and I do recommend this, I'm going to actually uh, go back up. Here we go. Is I'm going to recommend that you take this folder because we're going to need it in the future is right click on it and drag to the desktop and create a shortcut here. And the reason why we're going to do that, and I'm going to rename the shortcut and just get rid of shortcut on the back end because it's not my favorite. Um, boom. So anytime that I need to go back to that folder, I can come back here and I can do fun things. I can say, uh, this is going to be my project, um, whatever, um, rocket ship. All right. And then over here, my project rocket ship is there. And so this is that folder as well. I could go in here and I could also add, let's just say some new text files. I'm just going to put test text. Let's come over here and boom, right? The disadvantage about this is that it's not really conducive to do some coding and see what files you have in your project. So for that reason, I actually like Jupyter Lab. So here, I'm going to hit quit up here. And it says, now you have to shut down Jupiter. You got to close this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm actually going to close this that because I, I don't need it anymore. And I'm also going to make sure everything else is shut down. And I want to bring your attention here. I want to create an environment where I can start Jupiter Lab. Now, how do you start Jupiter Lab? So by the way, let's go back here. Let's go to Anaconda. And let's go to Anaconda Prompt. All right, so in Anaconda Prompt, we get this little um, outline, and you could type in Jupyter Notebook, and when you do this, it'll bring up the same example that I just showed you. But what is lesser known um, is you could type Jupyter Lab, and now it starts Jupyter Notebook with just a different presentation, and I don't know why they don't make this the default, but um, it starts everything up, and there's my Jupyter Lab. So now I have a directory on the left, and I have a launcher on the right. So I have Python projects. There's my project rocket ship. And look, there's that test file. And what I can do here is click on this first option and I can create, let's just go ahead and rename this. I'm going to just say this is a uh, uh, rocket ship um, test, right? So uh, terst, yeah, there we go, right? So now what's really good is now I can see all the project files that are going to be related to this and test might be part of that. So that's really fantastic. I think this is a great tool. Um, and I will continue to use this for future videos. So this will also help out. So then we go to file. We're going to go to shut down, shut down uh, Jupyter Lab as well. And I'm going to say leave. And uh, this doesn't always shut down that way, but we're going to fix that here in a moment. So I want to do one more thing. I want to create a shortcut on my computer like this one here, where if I click on it, it'll just go straight to Jupyter Lab. So here's how we do that. Um, since I'm in Windows 11, I could simply right click and I could just say open file location. And so you can go here into all apps as well and just hit, you know, more, right click more and open file location. And it brings you a uh, really cool way is the location of all those files. All right. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to copy this Jupyter Notebook file. So um, I'm going to show you how to do this real quick. We're going to hit copy. Then we're going to hit paste, and then we're going to rename our copy, and I'm just going to rename it as Jupyter Lab. Jupyter Lab. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to properties. All right, and we'll notice that here. And I wish I could make this bigger, but I can't. And I apologize. But right here where it says target. This is supposed to be the target where you're going to start. This is like the starting application, but it's actually cut off. At least it is for me. Now, it depends on, on who you are, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to come down here and hit 
open file location. And you notice that it brings me right to Python, right? And you're like, that, that doesn't seem right. Yeah, and this is the strange thing about Anaconda. What we actually want to do is once we open file location, we actually want to come up here to scripts. Then we want to scroll down and we want to find Jupyter Lab. Oh my gosh, Jupyter Lab. Actually, what that is pointing to, um, just so that way if you're kind of curious, it actually is pointing to this right here, which is a Jupyter Notebook EXE. Well, what we have to do is find the Jupyter Lab EXE. And that's not it. Here it is right here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a, a, a text document. Let me see if I can. Um, here we go. Notepad++. And um, let's just um, go ahead and open up a blank one besides all the other garbage that I have. And I'm going to do this. All right. So the first thing is I'm going to copy this name copy. I'm going to paste it here. And then I'm doing this just to make it simple. Then I'm going to come up here at the very top and I'm going to put my mouse right here in this now black space. And when I do, it gives me the directory location of that folder. And I'm just going to hit copy, come back to my notebook, hit paste, make sure that there's a backslash at jupyterlab.exe. And see this right here? We've just created a pointer to go right to Jupyter Lab. All right, so now I'm going to copy that, Command C, Control C, whatever you're used to. And I am going to delete everything here in the target, hit paste, and now that's my Jupyter Lab. All right, and then I'm going to hit apply, and I'm going to hit OK. All right, I won't need anything else again yet. All right, so let's go check out what's happening. So actually, because we did that, we can go to all apps, Anaconda, and look, Jupyter Lab is there. Wow, that's really cool, right? Because we just created it. How stupid are we? So what's going to happen is that it's going to go ahead and start to boot up. And what's really cool is that it will point to that Jupyter Lab EXE script. It's going to ask you a few questions. What do you want to do here? Yes, yes, yes. So I'm going to say that. And wow, I'm right here in Jupyter Lab. All right. What's really cool about Jupyter Lab, and if you notice it open back up in Rocket Ship, um, it should open up in the last folder every single time, right? And let's just see if it does or if it doesn't. Let's just give it a shot. So Jupyter Lab, one more time. So there it is. It's trying to open up. It's going to open up my browser in the other window so you can't see it because it's going to be slimy. And boom, it's still asking about rocket ship stuff. All right. So let's say that we don't want it to start here. Let's say we want to do something else, or let's say you're having issues, right? In fact, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to actually delete rocket ship. Oh, wow, I can do that right here. Delete failed. Oh, no. Well, I'll figure that out later. But what I'm going to do differently this time, I'm going to go file. Uh, I'm going to go file, and I'm going to go shut down, shut down, close everything down, leave, boom. And this is the last thing, all right? I'm going to go back to my shortcut here. Jupyter Lab. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to properties. And right here where it says start path, home path, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to click on my project and I am going to copy this directory. Command C, Control C, whatever you want to do. Come over here where it says home path. I'm just going to put that directory, hit apply, boom. Close that out. Close that puppy. Let's see what happens. Should start up inside that particular folder. So now it's starting. And boom. This happens to be my project folder. Right? So if I add another project, so this is going to be new project. Right. And then I can go there and I can start a whole new notebook. Yes, that's what it is, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Hit save. Uh, I'm going to rename it to uh, project because I really don't care right now. Right. I'll go file. I'll go shut down. Shut down. Oh, and by the way, let's take a look at this. There's my new project. Right. Let's say I want to get rid of project rocket ship. Come back here, Jupiter Lab. Go ahead, script is starting to roll. And then here it is starting up. Boom. Oh, it, it actually went to new project. 
Interesting. But notice it's saying that my root is still that project directory. So that's going to help you get started with Jupyter Lab. I hope this helps you out. And um, we'll see you next time.